Shit. Turn that alarm off. Oh, g'day. Keithy here. Thanks for joining me. So it's about time for me to get up and go to work, but I thought I'd approach a video that a lot of you guys have asked me questions about, and that is sleeping in the mining industry, including going on to night shift and how you sleep during the day when it's a little bit light outside. It can be difficult for a lot of people, so I guess grab a beer or if you're just getting up for work, grab a coffee, join in, see what we've got to say here about sleeping, sleep patterns, good things and bad things in the mining industry. Thanks for joining me again guys, glad to have you here. Don't forget to do the old usual trick. Go down there and subscribe to my channel if you like the videos that you see. Not only the mining stuff, I do some four wheel drive stuff as well, might interest you, a bit of camping. Sometimes I get the old product review stuff happening. Go have a look down in the description as well and see if you find anything there that you like. But yeah, don't forget to subscribe. I really appreciate your support, guys. Thumbs up if you like the video too. So today's video, I think is pretty important. I've had a lot of contacts on the YouTube in the comments down below and also via Chilling with Keithy over on Facebook. If you wanna get me, you can message me. It's more private over there. I have had so many chats over the years that I've been doing these mining videos about fatigue in the workplace. Most often, what is fatigue? Fatigue is you're tired. 99% of people have said to me, I'm just having trouble sleeping at work. I can't sleep, I can't get to sleep at night, or even for night shifters, people who haven't done night shift before, it actually can be quite difficult to get to sleep. So there's a lot of things to take into consideration when you work a FIFO roster, you gotta to remember too that when you are FIFO or Dido, so drive in, drive out, you're not at your own home. So you're sleeping in a foreign bed, most likely dirty old single bed, and it's not gonna be the most comfortable thing ever. You can't have your flush king mattress, fancy sheets, magic pillows, unless you bring them out yourself. And I can guarantee you the mind's not gonna fork out the dollar signs to give you $5,000 worth of bed like you have at home. So what can you do about it? Well, we're gonna go through a list of a few things here that might be able to help you with some demonstrations. And I'm also gonna go through a bit of a Q&A from things that you guys have commented as well. Now, I've talked to a few people about the kind of things that have helped them when they're having trouble sleeping in the mines. And I've also got a couple of your comments as well, people that I've worked with. So we'll go through all of that as well. While we're at it, let's have a bit of a quick look at Talkin. So you can get the app on your phone, iPhone and Android, Samsung, whatever they're called. I don't know them all that well. We'll go into the app now and have a bit of a look around. Now it doesn't have a lot to do with sleeping or fatigue in the mining industry. Maybe there's a bit of a market there, but I tell you what it does, if you are in the mines or even if you're in a bit of construction or ag, there's a lot of information inside Talkin that'll help you out. So we'll load the app up now. Now we'll have a look through here. You can scroll many, many topics, whether it's a bit of plant, machinery, anything like that. There are a lot of safety alerts as well, as you'll see if you go through. Tons and tons of safety alerts. So if you use the link in the description down there, that's right, that's my personal link. So it is safe to press the link, I should say and go into talking just like I am now and have a bit of a look through for yourself if you are in construction, mining or ag. It's designed specifically for mining, but I tell you what, there's a lot of information on the machinery there which can definitely help you out. Say you're on a farm somewhere, you've got a machine, maybe it's a Cat D10 dozer or whatever it might be. Have a look in there for that. Make sure you use the link, I'll say it again, use the link. That'll say, oh hey, Keithy sent me here, They'll give you a little handshake, and guess what? It doesn't cost a thing to get in there. It's free to use, guys, so you're mad if you don't. Go through, have a look, sign up, get the app as well, and enjoy looking through Talkin'. Try and find whatever you need to find 
things that can help you while you're getting around in the machinery or the plant in the mines or ag or anything like that. Anyway, let's get back into this video now. So some of the things that can help you with fatigue and more so sleep when you get out into the mines. All right guys, so I've got a bit of a list here. I've got an entourage in there as well. Things that we can talk about that'll help you get a little bit of sleep and try and reduce fatigue. Now, a lot of people in the mines go up to their supervisor and I recommend this too. If you are buggered, if you're fatigued, if you're not sleeping very well, definitely let your boss know. First thing I should say, because that way your boss is aware that you're not the full quid and they're gonna keep a bit more of an eye on you. They maybe they won't put you on that machinery just in case because there is a risk that you might do some damage to the machine or even harm to you or the blokes and women that you work with. So it's very important to manage your fatigue and if you can't sleep properly, that's gonna be one of the biggest things, a bigger driver that'll um, get you into trouble at work. Now we don't want incidents, we don't want accidents, we don't want people to lose their life while they go into the mines, whether it's surface or underground. We want everyone to basically wake up every morning, get dressed, go to work safe, come home and do the same. That way you can chat to the wifey, kids, husband, whatever it is, in happiness. So some of the things on the list here that I'm gonna to talk to you today, and I'm gonna give you some demonstrations as well. One of the first ones is room hygiene. Now, to some people that you might go, what? Room hygiene? Simple things like making the bed or preparing all of your stuff for the next day, all of that kind of stuff can make a little bit of a difference. You know, being a little bit organized, that way you don't have to rush when you wake up the next day. I'll give you an example now. So as you see there, a couple of little things that can help. Another one is the air conditioner. Now it's so simple, you get your aircon remote and you turn it on, you don't think too much about it. Some people like they're in to be super arctic, like negative 400 degrees. Other people just like a, a moderate temperature. So whatever your favorite temperature is, setting the aircon right can make a big difference. There's some of these places out west, in the middle of bloody nowhere or the desert even, uh, it can get quite hot and it can be, especially in summer, during the evenings, it might even only get down to 35 degrees. Where I work, I know it'll get up to 50 degrees, no worries. And some nights, yeah, 35 degrees on the low. So you need to have that aircon on to get a good sleep. And make sure you're setting your aircon right. Some people can't handle really cold, and I know personally, I don't like having the aircon set at 16 degrees. It's way too cold. So make sure you got that set right. A good point raised from some of the viewers of these videos who have sent me messages has said, Things like reducing noise. So if you're in an area of your mining camp or even at home, if you uh, live in the mining town, shut a window and keep the noise out might help you. Now, sometimes it can be a little bit difficult if you don't have air conditioning in your house for whatever reason. So you do need a bit of a breeze coming along just to be comfortable. Close the window, reduce the noise. If there's anything that's gonna tap or vibrate or even your phone, for example, Things like that can keep you awake during the day or night and you don't really want that. You wanna try and get a nice quiet sleep, peaceful sleep. So that's just one thing that you can do there too. Can you hear that? And mobile phones are a, a pretty big one here because let's face it, everyone's got a mobile phone, especially if you fly in, fly out, you wanna to talk to home. Well, you're finished work, when you wake up, you wanna send a text message or you wanna call your kids or whatever it may be. Uh, my advice, put your phone on silent when you go to bed. Make sure that your alarm will still go off if you use your phone as an alarm. You can put your phone, I know I personally do, you can put your phone onto silent and the alarm will still go off when you set it. Whoa. Ah, 
Shut up. Now we've got a list of activities before you go to sleep at night. TV. Common sense would suggest maybe you don't want to get your brain too active right before bed. So if you've got one of those really cool shows that you love to watch, maybe cut it half an hour before bed. Maybe you can go and read or something like that just to try and wind down. You don't want to have your brain active right before you want to go to sleep. Alcohol, another thing too. Now, a lot of people have said to me, they don't sleep very well after they've had a few drinks. And normally your body's still active and running around because most alcohols have got a lot of sugar content. So that's something that will keep you awake as well. Leading off the sugar content thing is food. Eating late at night will keep your body active because it's trying to digest. And that again is gonna try and keep you up through the night you can't control that, your body's in charge of digestion. So you wanna try and maintain your food intake a couple of hours before you go to sleep, maybe three or four hours, if you can get away with it. Another thing too is a moderate bedtime. So if you're a late nighter at home, you come home and you don't mind going to bed at you know midnight or whatever, late night when you're at home. Now that's all good when you're at home, but when you're in the mine and you gotta wake up at say four o'clock in the morning, get ready, go up, have a feed and then go off to site, you wanna be going to bed at a respectful time because let's face it, midnight is a bit late. You need more than four hours sleep. Minimum you wanna try and get is about six hours. So say you went to bed at nine o'clock, woke up at three, that's pretty good. That gives you plenty of time to wake up, smell the roses, have a bit of a coffee, get dressed, go in for a feed or cook yourself a feed if you have to do that. Just some of the ways that you can improve your little routine there and probably get better sleep at the same way. Um, Another one is soft drinks and phone usage. Now, I've already talked about phone usage. Try and cut it off if you can. I know a lot of people like to call home, but you wanna try and cut it off at a reasonable time. So if your partner works, for example, has to look after the kid, they might be running around from, say, five in the afternoon until 8.30 at night because they gotta do all of that kind of stuff. But if you need to go to bed at 8.30 at night, maybe you can work out a way that you can have half an hour of chat in the middle there somewhere and then everybody wins, you get to talk to the wifey, husband, kids, whatever. They get to do what they gotta do and then you can do what you gotta do, wind yourself down and go to sleep that way. Distractions as well are another big thing. So things like Facebook or Instagram or TikTok or Winky Wonky or whatever other apps there are out there that might keep you awake. Often society would suggest that turning your phone off and doing those kind of things, removing your Facebook and all that kind of stuff at, late at night will probably keep your mind from running active, looking at pictures and people's comments and seeing how many people like that picture you took of your toes or whatever it is. Reducing the time that you use that, you don't have to stop using it by all means. But maybe if you need to go to bed at say eight or nine or 9.30 or whatever it is at night, give yourself a half an hour to wind down, turn off the phone. Maybe pick up a book or something like that. Have a bit of a read, a magazine, something that will just calm you down a bit. You don't have to flick through the screens and it's not a bright light either. You can dim the light in the room. Ah, g'day baby, how are ya? Haven't chatted to you in forever. Let's have a big one. No, 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 it's only 9 p.m. We'll be right, we'll be right. Let's get into it. Mmm. Yeah, tell me about it. Oh, yeah. Mmm. Yeah. No, I'm on the good bourbon. Woodford Reserve, that's good stuff, man. only had four drinks tonight, so I've got plenty of room to go. Uh, 11.30, she'll be right. I don't start work until 4.30. So good. I'll get enough sleep. Yeah, more chips. I'll have some more chips. 
Okay, so another one is things that can settle you a little bit more right before bed is getting ready for the next day. I know everybody's different in the preparation that they want to do, but if you had your work uniform laid out, ready to go for tomorrow, and if you grabbed your tucker the night before from the kitchen, then that's all ready to go. So not only do you have to, you don't have to rush, I should say, in the morning, it'll just mean that if you need a little bit extra sleep, you've got that time there. You've done the hard work, you've grabbed your food, you've got your uniform, everything is ready. So all you have to do in hindsight is get up, grab a quick feed and off you go to work. So you're not in a rush. If you do like to get as much sleep as you can and wait till the very last minute to get up and go to work, and there's plenty of people like that, then that's just one way to get through. So another one is late night activities, what you're doing late at night. If you like to have a beer with the boys, nothing wrong with that. If you like to have a beer with the boys at 10.30 at night, maybe you're pushing it a little bit. If it gets to midnight, maybe you definitely should be in bed because you don't want to wake up late for work. Not only that, you don't want to head to work and do a breath and blow numbers because that, ladies and gentlemen, means your job is history. So you need to watch your alcohol intake. It's okay to have a few drinks with the mates out at work, but just keep in mind, you need to get to work the next day, sober as a judge, and make sure that you do your job properly, safely for you and for everyone out there that you work with. Where was her again? What the? What's the time? Midnight. We're gonna start in four hours. Four hours. If we get around the turps for an hour. Yeah, man. I'll be there in five. Right. -o. A really big one now is sleep patterns too. A lot of people have trouble obtaining a sleep pattern when they're in the mines. You need to establish when you need to go to work and when you get home from work every day and try and give yourself a little bit of time to unwind after work, get yourself ready for sleep, have a good sleep, and then give yourself enough time in the morning to get up, do your activities, brush your teeth, comb your hair, whatever it is you gotta do the finding the pattern is the hard thing to do. Everybody's different. I could wake up at four o'clock in the morning and spend an hour putting my makeup on it, whatever it may be, you're different to me. Maybe you like to wake up at three and you want to iron your uniform before you go to work. You send a quick text message to the missus and say, see you later, you know. Things like everybody is different, but finding a pattern, a routine, that'll keep your mind settled so that when you do go to bed, you do have a good sleep and you feel refreshed when you do wake up. Spending a lot of time on these big rosters is a really, really hard thing. So you don't want to end up getting sleep debt. You don't want to be fatigued. When you wake up and go to work, fatigue is very, very dangerous and people don't really put an emphasis on it. Some people will go to work like a zombie and think that that's all right, but you are actually a risk. So you need to make sure that you are getting plenty of sleep at night. There's a big one now and this one affects a lot of people is because they're not familiar with it, working night shift. So sleeping during the day, it can be difficult because there's a lot of light during the day. You've got to try and mask it somehow. Now what a lot of blokes that I know have done, and even myself, is you tape up the window and you put alfoil against the window and that will literally stop every bit of light going into your room. You'll have a great sleep during the day that way. Now, it, it can be a little bit difficult, especially if you're not allowed to put things on the window. You might have to get permission to do that, don't ask me. Uh, but putting that airfoil on there will literally block all the light. It'll be like nighttime because it's very hard to sleep during the day. It's like going camping and leaving the headlights on your car pointing at your tent. It's not real good. You're probably not gonna sleep. So now we've gone through a complete list of things that you guys have told me and things that I've put together just from my time in the mining industry for about 20 odd years that have definitely helped me out and have helped a lot of my viewers out. You guys who do comment, so don't forget to subscribe. Again, I know I said it before. Now I've got another list here. These are things 
from you guys ways that they have um, basically found a way around problems sleeping in the mining industry. So we'll go through just a couple really quickly before the video is finished. So um, Steve mentions to me uh, what we just talked about then, too much light. These are things that keep people up. Light keeps people up. If you've got a torch pointing at your head, you're gonna find it difficult because even though your eyes are shut, background light can still enter into your through your um, eyelids, believe it or not, and keep you awake. That's why boarding up the window where you can, that's gonna help you get sleep on day shift. At night shift, you wanna make sure that you got lights dim everywhere. You know, if your phone flashes or whatever when you charge, maybe put a, a pillow or a sheet or your, your work clothes or something over the top of it just to stop that light but not block it from like alarms or anything like that going off. Aaron said some of the stuff that keeps him up, people and problems at home. So, you know, mum might be crook or the kids have got issues or school or you've got a mortgage and bills and you're running behind in your payments or things like that can keep you awake at night. It can be difficult to get out of um, the thought pattern that is problems at home keeping you up at night. It's very, very difficult. And one of the ways that I found it really, really good if there is something going on at home is just to put it in a bit of paper like this, fold it up. You're not throwing it out, but you're just putting it away for the night and you come back to it, whether that's tomorrow in a couple of days or when you fly home from work, that'll keep you going. Chloe here says sometimes that a room is too cold and that keeps her up. So thank you for that, Chloe, because it's actually 100% right. If you go to bed super cold, you're gonna wake up with a fever you're gonna come up with a, a cough or dry, your eyes might be dry. You could get pretty sick from a super cold room. Likewise, if it's too hot, you're gonna sweat your ring out all night and probably not have a very good sleep. So if the room is too cold, you're probably not gonna sleep well. You need to find that optimum temperature, which is not negative 600 degrees, unless you live in Antarctica. You wanna get that perfect temperature to try and sleep with at night. Thanks for that, Chloe. Squidman, he says, on the ping is brah. Oh, okay, no, that's probably not something that you should do. But thanks anyway for that one, Squidman. And Michelle says, bread, milk, orange juice, margarine. Oh, oh, no, that's Michelle's shopping list. I think you've sent me the wrong one, Michelle. And lastly, Jason said, the best thing that he finds to help him get to sleep is to calm activity, light music, and that's one of the ways that keeps him really, really content and sort of gets a little bit sleepy towards the end of the night. So thanks for that one, mate. I really appreciate it. So guys, that's about it for the mining video today. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate your contributions through uh, Facebook there. You can message me there. Also, just down here, you can comment if you want. Depends whether you want a little bit of privacy on your comment or not. Thank you for subscribing. Thank you for watching. I appreciate the time that you spend watching these videos. I hope you enjoyed it. I put a little bit of a comedic side to it just to try and keep things live. Uh, but anyway, guys, I will see you next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care.